Hello everybody, welcome to a brand new Let's Play series of Hearts of Iron 4 Kaiserreich. Today we're going to be playing as the right KMT. So if you did not know, there's not just the left KMT. I mean, the left KMT I think is guaranteed to spawn every single campaign. Uh, around here? I'm pretty sure it's around this area. Left KMT are going to spawn. We've, we've done them uh, before in the past. We've never played the right KMT. We've actually never even played in uh, Yunnan before. So we got a little bit of a, a double new thing going on here. But uh, we'll go through, I have a little uh, guide to show me how exactly to get the right KMT. Of course it requires the Qing Dynasty to completely break apart, but that'll happen sooner rather than later. Uh, we'll assign a Field Marshal, we'll assign a General. I'm not too sure who's actually going to uh, remain for too long. Because, uh, you know, there is going to be a complete breakdown of both the Yunnan clique and the Qing Dynasty as a whole. Uh, but first things first, we need to get ourselves the Master of the Eastern Continent. So we'll go with you first. Research slot, we have two slots. Fantastic. We'll go with Research and Production Efficiency Cap. We have seven factories right now. We're at 324, so we'll go for... I think we're already have a 10% bonus. Wait, what do we start off as? Oh, we're already on personalization? God damn. Okay, that's actually pretty, pretty good. Uh, but we'll take a 10%... Actually, no, let's go one civilian first. I... We'll, we'll put it here for now. I mean, there's no really good to put it because we don't have any. We have no, no factories or infrastructure to give us a construction speed bonus. But this should be okay for now. So let us uh, get started here. The status of the Yunnan clique. The decision to found, uh, decision to found Yunnan Military Academy in 1909 gave birth to the Yunnan clique. Since the 1911 Zihai Revolution, the province of Yunnan has been known for its elite army and loyalty to Chinese republicanism. In 1915, Yunnan alone declared a national protection war against Yan Shikai and toppled the empire. The victorious Yunnan then pursued an expansionist policy, exerting control over its neighbors. The inferior Yunnan hegemony became at a price over, losing control of many units deployed outside of Yunnan. The military adventure in Sichuan was a failure and caused a major civil conflict within, Yunnan, within the Yunnan clique. General Gu Pishan uh, temporarily ousted Tang Yao uh, from power, but Tang regrouped and returned with his loyal troops, managing to secure victory in Gyu. However, since then, the Yunnan army has no longer been able, uh, been an integral force. Old classmates and brother arms rapidly become rivals. During the Northern Expedition, Yunnan's leading warlord Tang Jiao kept a distance from the Guangzhou KMT government, while other Yunnan troops in exile, led by General Zhu Pied, uh, rallied behind a banner of national revolution and became a pillar of Sun Yat-sen's military force. When the Northern Expedition tragically ended and desperate generals for the National Revolution Army decided to return to the south back to Yunnan, the attrition was heavy, and many of them ended at, up at the door of Guangzhou. Uh, Tang's newly conquered land. Tang wanted to seize a chance and annihilate his old enemies right there, but his generals, led by uh, Long Yong, strong armed Tang, and offering uh, sanctuary to defeated NRA. The coexistence of former rivals is not easy, but they knew uh, the new ruler of China, the Zili clique, and their German patron would not tolerate an autonomous Yunnan, and they could only survive through cooperation. Despite its formidable battle commanders uh, and elite army, the lack of unified command authority has cost Yunnan uh, dearly when it's uh, undoubtedly joined the four Zili Fantian War. As the new year starts and for the southern province, Tang Jiao's authority over the clique is far from assured. His despotism and blatant favoritism uh, he displays towards his incompetent brother, Tang uh, Jiu, alienates his high-ranking officers, including Long Gong. Submission of Tu Qing has also undermined his prestige, and he holds nothing but nominal control over the former NRA troops. Uh, with the ever-mounting political tension between the officers of Yunnan, Tang's next misstep may prove to be his last. So I'm pretty sure we need to get him out of power. I think Long Yun is the... Leader of the KMT. I think they are. Yeah, we got Wang Yu and Tang Jiao. I just want to make sure that that was actually who we want to uh, take control. This doesn't actually say who's supposed to be. It just tells me the steps I need to take to get that there. But I'm pretty sure it's the um, social conservatives. The um, authoritarian Democrats and I think the social liberals as well. All the former NRA uh, factions are the KMT. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, I don't think I am. We have 200,000 manpower, 25% stability, 25% war support. I mean, manpower shouldn't be too much of a problem for this campaign, uh, primarily because hey, we're in China. There's a lot of people here, so we we should be good for manpower basically forever. 139 rifles. How are our units? Oh, they are fucking garbage. They are terrible. Get our, we won't take this. because, like, like I've said, I think, in previous uh, campaigns in China, 
is that their form is based on Army Navy experience. So we're not going to give ourselves an unfair leg up over the uh, the other Chinese cliques. Black Monday has hit you not. With the collapse of the Berlin stock market, the Black X Monday ripples have finally traveled across the world and reached our beloved province. All you have benefited from the German imports uh, have their price greatly reduced. Thanks to the crisis, their exports are now being taxed excessively uh, for their transport outside of Yunnan. While we can still keep most of our industry afloat, the sudden increase in tax and transportation costs through the Kunming Haifeng uh, Railway and the slight reduction of tin acquisitions from the international market have hurt us badly. While we deal with the fallout, the anti-German sentiment is on the rise in Yunnan, and many wonder if there's a way for our commerce to be less reliant on this intervention. You know what? That's actually, like, not a great Black Monday. I'm, I'm surprised, actually, that Black Monday is so bad for you, Nan. Because there, there, I think there's countries in Europe that don't have this bad of a penalty. The master of the East Continent. Next up, we need to take the mountain economy, so we'll get this uh, going next. Thanks to you, Nan's valiant efforts during the War of National Protection, all of China has saved from the power-hungry tyrant. For our service, you, Nan was granted huge swaths of land and compensation, uh, which has made our relatively isolated clique a hegemon in China. However, the German intervention in several wars, skirmishes, border conflict afterwards, Yunnan has been greatly weakened and reduced. And Tang Yao, uh, Yao knows this. While he had proclaimed that he had towed the line to keep the fragile peace, uh, we have kept in the Qing for nearly a decade. In secret meetings, he has begun requesting his generals to start drawing plans. While today there is no chance of breaking the Zili dominance, we can still prepare for when the time is right to take them down. So thanks for the time political power, I do appreciate that. So you're Long Yun. And again, I don't want to really spend any points upgrading any generals or anything like that. Because I don't know who's going to actually be a military officer in uh, in the KMT going into the future. This doesn't say, right? This doesn't say their allegiance. It says that he's like a substance abuser. Korean Liberation Army. Okay, I mean, that's kind of neat, but not, <laughs> not too meaningful uh, for us here. Okay, League of Eight provinces are breaking completely apart. So we have the left KMT. And I think the left KMT is a little interesting for us. Because I don't know if they need to collapse for the right KMT to take power. Usually the, the left KMT doesn't do very well anyways. But we'll, we'll kind of see how this goes. Okay, army reform. Nothing here that we need to worry about. An opportunity presents itself. With the collapse of the League of Eight provinces, several new army cliques have banded together and formed new frigid entities. While we are friendly to some, like Wang Xi and Guadong, there are others that directly contest our sphere of influence, namely Hunan. Uh, now that they are still reorganizing, would be a perfect time to strike. However, our heart command is opposed to this idea, citing the recent economic downturn uh, that Black Monday supposes for Yunnan as a reason for why we should wait until we sort out our internal issues before attacking. Despite their protest, Tang has a reputation for opportunism, and has never uh, been a clear opportunity for expansion in recent years. Well, let's delete you. Let's send you to the uh, Hunan clique's borders for now. So we need to do the mountain economy. Following this, we need to seize the chance. Then we need to have the general staff meeting. Then we got to purge the high command and then revise the... So we need to get this tree done afterwards. The officer department uh, asked for support. Military clique at Sichuan to the north has collapsed in civil war. With various warlords of the province turning on each other. While well, in most cases, it would be as usual in China, the very south of Sichuan has been occupied by the officer department, remnants of the KMT aligned groups that have supported our last invasion in 1933. Now, the Civil War, uh, they have a chance, however small, to take control of the entire province, and are asking for our support for their endeavor. Supporting the officer department will certainly be costly, but the advantage of turning Sichuan into a KMT stronghold must not be underestimated. You can send them troops, send them some guns. You know, send them some troops and some guns. Why not? So I'm not too sure. I, I know that um, the Guazdong clique can also become the right KMT. I think Szechuan can as well. Let's just, let's just hope that um, that I don't screw this up, which is, which is entirely possible. It would it it could easily happen. So we will do uh, seize a chance. The Yunnanis economy. Yunnan is still one of the least economically developed areas in China in terms of overall economic power due to its mountainous terrain and bad communication with the outside world. Yunnan depends mostly on its agriculture and mining to sustain itself, and it has overall uh, grown especially reliant on opium production and other crass crops like tobacco and sugar in order to provide for its peasants. In Kunming, the establishment of the Kunming arsenal and textile industry is in decades prior. It's also begun establishing a small industrial base for what is essentially a faraway corner of China. This seemingly un uh, relevant, 
unrelated economic characteristics now grown relevant again. Black money's effects have greatly destabilized the province. Economic experts like Miao Yuntai have been brought to uh, brought up huge reform plans in order to push for the province out of the crisis and forward into the future. Miao Yuntai is a long time expert on the United's economy and one of China's most renowned econ uh, economists. Has been one of the harshest critics of Tang Jiao's economic policies over the years. Supporting aggressive industrialization program and, had, and a complete overhaul of data culture production in the province, uh, Miao has uh, presented a reform plan for Yunnan, which is a split into two, the agricultural and the industrial reforms. While Yunnan has, in the long run, the capacity to complete both, he argues that undertaking both programs would greatly uh, reduce the uh, economic capabilities, as well as hindering the effectiveness of the reforms. As such, he advised that whatever reform we choose to do first, we fully commit to its completion before moving on to the next. Well, obviously, we're going to do the... Um, we're going to do the industrial solution first. Because usually that's what gives us factories. And if you've ever played Hearts of Iron 4 before, or if you've ever watched his channel before, you should know that uh, factories are pretty important. Actually, it might be, might be one of the most important resources in the game. If not, if not the most. I guess actually having more souls. I don't know. Whatever. Reports of Yang Zhi, uh, Zhenjin in Yunnan. Following the disappearance of Zhihai's uh, sage governor, Yang Zhenjin, uh, reports have flocked to uh, Meng Zhi in Yunnan to get a scoop on his hometown. Town people in Meng Zhi remarked that Yang's family is still well off and are refusing to give hints as to where Yang would have gone. Most reporters came to the conclusion that Yang has returned to his military post in Gangshu and ended their investigation there. The intimate few who had a connection to Gangshu, however, have reported that Yang has not been seen in Gangshu, but traces of his gold bullions have shown up in the hands of trade merchants in Yunnan. Although there is no solid proof of this yet, it appears that Yang could either have been robbed or is living incognito. It's not negative 60 political power, but you know, why, why, why would we need it, right? We don't need political power. Okay, Pius XII has been elected Pope. Fantastic for them. We'll go research speed with you next. You know, staff meeting high command and United Army's uh, force are really open in pr protest. Because we don't, we don't want to defuse the situation. What, I, what we want to do is we want to purge the high command. Again, at least according to this guy that I have open, hopefully it's correct. Yeah, Australia's gone syndicalist. Not a major deal for us. So we're going to get an annexation goal against you. Yeah, of course, we're going to uh, do the general staff meeting. I guess we can mobilize the troops afterwards. So we don't need it for both of these. The general staff refuses to take action. With Tang's declaration for our armies to prepare to fight Yunnan, or uh, Hunan, the majority of the senior officers in Yunnan have declared itself uh, against such a course of action. has ordered their troops to stand down or remain in their barracks. As sanctions escalate, Tang's close advisors have recommended for them to exercise caution and to try to reach an agreement with the generals and to drop the matter for the time being. Even if that means allowing Hunan to slip away from our fingers. Tang, however, has not received this report well and has seemingly secluded himself in his home in Kunming for the time being. Allegedly to reflect on the situation in order to come up with a solution. We don't actually have a cost of belly. It would have been nice if we did. You're 21 days, 35 days, 35 days. And that should lead to you, I believe. Do we need all of them? We do need all of them. For a negative 137. I mean, at some point, we will... Um, We'll do pretty well for ourselves. You're at war with Anqing. You're at war with Nanqing as well. I've heard that this guy up here, uh, the, the national populist. Uh, you're Xiaodong, right? I've heard that they're also a pretty good uh, Chinese clique to play. So maybe at some point we'll do, uh, we'll do that. The general meeting. A delegation led by General Long Young arrived in Kunming yesterday, allegedly reporting uh, that several officer cliques within Yunnan have presented their complaints via General Yi. Or via the Yi General. As a quest of the meeting with uh, Tang Xiao uh, is to take place today, the generals have set their terms uh, clear to Tang. None of them wish to abide for an attack against Hunan. It is almost unanimous, uh, both politically and economically, this advantage for the clique as a whole it would endanger the last bash of true republicanism, the crushing and humiliating defeat. With the liberation have gone on, Tang has finally decided that. So what we want to do is all we got to pick the bottom. We got to pick the bottom ones. Which I'm pretty sure is what we did for the last one. Right? I, I, I chose the bottom one before. I'm pretty sure. Miao uh, Huntai requests uh, to hire Canadian tin experts. 
As part of the ongoing economic reforms in Yunnan, the subject of the tin trade has brought up repeatedly the Tang's attention. While there is no denying that the tin trade is extremely profitable to the province, a lack of interest and constant instability in the province has made any progress into making that endeavor into an even more profitable one grind to a halt. However, since the recent downturn has allowed Miao Yuntai to reach a relative political position, he has once again pointed out to his book he authored back in the early 20s, outlining the Ganjiao tin industry. In it, he detailed how to strengthen our gains for the mining industry and how to reduce the hold of German economic interests over, over our precious tin. As the first step of his plan, he is requested to bring Yunnan a tin uh, mining expert from Canada in order to assist in assessing the changes that will be required in order to make Yunnan's tin industry greater than ever. So we'll take another 50 political power. You know, we're at negative 278. I'm, I'm sure that is completely, completely okay. And nothing bad could possibly happen here. We'll go 100% research bonus. You know what? Thank you very much. I will definitely take that. I mean, if you're offering it, like, why would I, why would I say no? But I do think that at least with a uh, with an internal crisis brewing in Yunnan, this is gonna be a good time for us to end this episode for today. So thank you for watching. Me as an answer, if you enjoyed, my thumbs up. Not enjoy, close thumbs down. If you want to see more? Subscribe and goodbye.